Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in this video, I'm very excited to show you the two new features that we're introducing in Oxygen 3.4 Alpha 1. First, and most notably, is the undo slash redo functionality. In addition to undo slash redo, we're also adding shape divider functionality, which is another very highly requested feature in our user community. So let's jump right into Oxygen, and I'll show you how these new features work. So we'll begin here by taking a look at the undo slash redo feature. Oxygen has always had a single layer undo for element deletion. So say we go up here and delete this element, we can click undo in this little red pop-up and it restores the element. But that's not good enough for changes like if you select a div and accidentally click the link button and decide, oops, I don't want that to be a link wrapper and then cancel. Well, guess what? It's still a link wrapper. So at that point, you were faced with a difficult decision of how to recreate this element to get it back to a div or don't save and refresh and it's just a big hassle. So now we can go up here and click this little back arrow and that change is gonna be immediately reverted and we're back to having a div. Undo Redo tracks any change made in the builder, including changes to properties in the properties pane and global settings and styles, as well as structural changes. Like say we want to rearrange this section a little bit and we decide, well, that looks terrible. I wish I hadn't done that. Instead of having to just drag everything back into its place, we can click the back arrow until we're back to where we wanna be. Now we also have control slash command Z and control slash command Y for undo and redo respectively. Now let's step back up to that messed up layout we just created. And here we are at that final state we arrived on. But say we don't wanna go all the way back or it's a very long journey to get all the way back. We also have the history pane here, which will show us all of the undo points that are available. We can step back to a specific spot in the history, which will Go ahead and revert all the changes necessary to reach that point. We can go back to the initial state of the whole layout, or we can go back to where we were with our whole messed up arrangement. And in this case, I think I wanna go back to how we started. So let's go back to the initial state. Let's save. And now our layout is perfect again. So as you can see, undo slash redo is a really important piece of functionality that we're really excited to bring to you and that should really improve your oxygen workflow. Now the next feature is highly requested but a bit more of a cosmetic change. This is shape dividers. With shape dividers, you've seen them in pretty much every other builder and on pretty much every modern website. They're used to change the edges of sections to make them less straight. So what we've done is we've kind of brewed up our own take on shape dividers. If we go down here and select, say, this section here, and we wanna break up that bottom line, we can go over to the primary tab of the properties pane and click add shape divider. And that's gonna drop a shape divider in. Now in this case, we'd probably want it to be white. So we're gonna change it to white. And we might not like that shape, so we have a bunch of shapes here to choose from. And most of them are vague enough that they can work for almost any site. Plus they can be manipulated a bit through width and height to get them to look a bit differently if you don't like them out of the box. So let's choose instead of this wavy one, let's choose an angle here. That looks pretty good. And let's look at balance. Let's look at cave. Let's look at curvy. I actually kind of like the curvy one, so let's stick with that. Now, as you can see, it's overlapping this box here. Because of the way we've built these shape dividers, they're actually their own individual elements within the section, which means we can manipulate the z-index. So let's set this z-index to, say, 1, and then we can go into this element and set its z-index under Advanced Layout to Two, and that's gonna put it over top of the shape divider. But if we wanted it to be, it could be underneath the shape divider. Another really powerful part of the way we've implemented shape dividers is that you can layer them. You can have as many shape dividers per section as you want. So let's say we want another shape divider here on the bottom. We simply select the section, go down to add shape divider, and then we're gonna change the shape and let's choose that same curvy shape but let's change the height a bit. Let's try 320. 
So that's going to get us a little bit higher than the first one. And then let's change the color to a transparent white. And that's going to give us a nice little layered effect there. And we can do that again if we want. We can change that and change it to 330 pixels height. And we can almost fade out these shape dividers over multiple layers. Let's reduce this opacity a bit, 30. And then let's duplicate that again. And then we'll do 340 pixels height. And then we're going to change the opacity down again. So as you can see, we have now have a really nice soft edge there with multiple different opacity layers of that shape divider. The other thing we could do is just get really crazy with it and change the shape entirely. So let's try something like, uh, I don't know, diamond. And then let's change the opacity here up so we can see what we're doing. And then we could actually reduce the height a little bit. So let's dial that down. And now you can see we have these kind of faded curves behind the diamonds. And we can go ahead and we can even change the color of these a bit. And we can also kind of put these diamonds between whichever layer of shape dividers we want through manipulation of Z index. So let's get rid of these diamonds. And of course, you're probably wondering, what if I want a shape divider on the top of a section? Well, of course, we didn't forget that. So let's add a new shape divider. And then we just choose position top. And that's going to put it at the top of the section. Now, in this case, this section isn't really a good color to do that with. So let's change that to this pink color just for illustration purposes. And then we'll go down and we'll have to go into the structure and select our shape divider. And then we're gonna go ahead and change it to that same pink color. And of course it's overlapping these boxes. So we just need to adjust the Z index a bit. So let's select this shape divider and let's change the Z index to one. And then we'll change these boxes to a Z index of two, go down here, two. And then if we wanted to, we could leave this one underneath the shape divider, that second box to add an extra level of depth in the way things are layered. So actually let's go ahead and just leave that as it is. Now let's select the shape divider again. And we can flip it horizontally too, if we don't like the way it's laid out. We can also change the height as you saw previously. We can change the width. If we like this shape, but we want it to be a little less dramatic, we can set it to like 200% width and then adjust the height down if we need to. And I personally like to go, if I want a less dramatic shape, I like to go at a fairly low height and a fairly wide width. And as you can see, it's kind of a soft, smooth wave now. We can also set it to center horizontally. For some shapes that are symmetrical, you'll want it to be centered horizontally no matter how wide it is. So this checkbox takes care of that. Now, another really cool thing we wanted to do is because it's impossible for us to make all the shapes you could ever possibly want, we wanted you to be able to put your own custom SVG shapes in easily. So we have a field here for custom shape. And I'll show you how that works. We're gonna jump over to getwaves.io, which is an SVG shape generator. And let's just roll the dice a couple of times to find something we like. There we go, let's go with that because that looks a little different than anything we have baked in. Now we click the download button and we're gonna copy this SVG code. Now there's a little bit of preparation that might need to be done with some of the SVGs you're gonna use in Oxygen. So let's pull up VS Code. And we'll just paste this in to a new file here. So a couple of things that you're gonna to want to adjust is we're gonna to need to add an attribute to the actual SVG element. And the attribute is gonna be called preserve aspect ratio equals none. This is going to let us more fully manipulate the size of the SVG. Then anywhere there's a fill, you're going to want to change this to current color. And then I like to just do a control F for fill and make sure there aren't any I missed. Perfect. So now that we've done a bit of preparation here, we can copy that and we'll jump over to oxygen. Right here. And we'll paste that shape in. And then we're going to change the width a bit to 100%. And we're going to change the height so we can actually see that shape because we've kind of flattened it out. And now you can see we have this more angular 
shape that we created. It's not a smooth wave, but it's copied directly from get waves. And we could put it on the bottom if we want. We can flip it. And we can manipulate the height and width. So in this way, you can get SVG shapes from pretty much anywhere. And as long as you have that preserved aspect ratio none set on the SVG element and the fills are all set to current color, then you're going to be able to manipulate them with the Oxygen interface. So those are the two new features we're introducing in Oxygen 3.4 Alpha 1. Again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and thank you very much for watching.